Uh, to just sit down and figure it out. Yeah. I mean, there's a stack of reviews out that give all the information that people need. But people want to know what you think. What I think? No one wants to know what I think. I think they do. That's the whole point of them watching the video. Hmm. Maybe you're right. Hey, Gear Seekers. <laughs> How you going? I'm Nick. <laughs> Today we're checking out the Thermaltake Tower 100. We're going to rip this thing apart, uh, take a look at how everything works, and then, right at the end, I'm gonna tell you what I think about this thing. So without further ado, you know what time it is. Let's do a uh, case thing. Okay, let's start off with panel removal. This one's a little bit weird to get into. Uh, there's a push top, you gotta to push down and lift the top off. So it's just got a mesh top with a mesh filter Pretty standard stuff for these uh, open meshy kind of cases. Thermaltake did actually revise this design to make it open. The first iteration they showed off was basically a glass box, but now it's not so much of just a glass box. They retooled the whole thing and here we are. Included in the case is a bunch of tweezers, screws and blanking plates. Yes, tweezers, you heard me right. Rear panel removal is really simple. It's just four thumb screws on the back. And there's also another mesh filter on the back here. It's magnetic. And there is also a 120 mil fan mount, which is on the back here. You can also mount a 140 to the rear if that is your preference as well. These panels that lie around the edge of the bottom of the case can also be removed as well. There's three panels in total. All of them have thumb screws. So you just undo these thumb screws and these panels also remove. Each panel has its own filter as well. This, this case, what you're gonna learn very quickly is it's got a lot of filters and there's filters absolutely everywhere on this case. Speaking of those filters, there is an additional filter on the bottom here and also one for the power supply as well. So lots of filters going on here. Getting into this case can be quite confusing. It's actually a little bit uh, unnecessary. They should have just made it, uh, it, sh it should have been easier. I'm just gonna be honest here. You need to remove the screws around the top. The, the issue I have with this is all the screws, uh, they're, they're not all the same screw. So you've got like two different types of screws to do this. They could have quite easily have just done like four screws, they, don't, they didn't need the additional screw going into this bit where the front IO is. There's another 120 mil fan pre-installed on the top of the case as well. And all these fans are DC powered, they are not PWM, so they're only three pin fans. As far as front panel connectors, you've got your standard array of connectors here. USB 3.0, USB type C, lights and wires and full of switches and reset buttons and whatnot, and also front panel audio. You've got your power button, your reset button, a headphone and a microphone jack, USB 3.0 ports, and also USB type C. Once that top panel's removed, the panels are quite easy to lift off. You just slide them up. It's a combination of TG and that mesh panel with additional filters. Uh, both sides are exactly the same in this regard. As I'm about to show you right now, we just lift them up. Pop them out, there goes the filter. And the front panel is the same as well, it just lifts up. And now you've got access to everything. Okay, in terms of motherboard support, this case supports ITX boards only. I know people are gonna be like, it looks big enough for MATX, but you cannot fit an MATX board in here. In terms of GPU support, you've got up to 335 millimeters of clearance because the GPU mounts like this and the outputs for the GPU are on the top of the case. Here you can see the ROG Strix RTX 3080 white. So you can just see how much space there is. When it's mounted, this GPU will actually sit a little bit up. It'll sit up here like that, right? So plenty of clearance for these massive GPUs. The main problem you're gonna see with these big GPUs is actually it's sitting up against the glass. So a big GPU like this will sit very, very close to the glass. Uh, I just have seen reports that the thermals of this case are actually not too bad. We're obviously gonna test that in this video. We're gonna let you know, but from first glance, it doesn't look too good. In terms of hard disk mounting, you've got three and a half inch hard drive mounts here and 2.5 inch SSD drive mounts here on this back panel that can be removed with these thumb screws. But be aware, 
if you do mount SSDs here, you'll need to use a 12 mil thick fan, or if you're mounting full size hard drives, the 3.5 inch spinning rust drives, you won't be able to use the exhaust fan on the rear. So make sure you do take that into account if you're gonna be using this case. There's also additional SSD mounting on the side of the case as well, if that's another option. So in total, you can do four 2.5 inch SSDs in this case. For power supplies, you've got this power supply mounting bracket here on the rear. A regular size power supply will do. You can do SFX with an adapter bracket if that's what you wanted to do, but this case is quite large. So you probably don't need to go down that path for this case, but, like, but as I mentioned, you just loosen up these four screws here, pull off the bracket, mount your power supply to it, slot it in, screw these up and you're good to go. Bob's your uncle. For power supply length, I would probably recommend 170 mil being the absolute max for this case. The bonus of this case and the thing that makes it nice is you can do all your cable management down here and just pass the cables up that you need through to any other area of the case that you need to do any type of cable routing. For GPU power supply cables, I think it's actually quite nice because you can run those PCIe power cables here and you won't even see them plugged into the GPU. So that's actually quite nice. I don't mind that at all. While we're on the topic of cable routing, there's this big old rubber grommet for the 24 pin power connector to send juice to your MOBO. Because of the really odd shape of this case, you would think that you'd be able to do like a 240 mil AIO or whatnot, but you can only do a 120 mil up the top. I'm not quite sure why they went for this because if they just changed the internal configuration and the layout a bit, they could have actually allowed you to put a uh, bigger cooler in here, but it is what it is. So if you're wanting to build with a higher end CPU, like a Ryzen 7 or a Ryzen 9, I would say probably not, or an i9 or whatnot. I would probably say don't go for this case unless you're wanting to use an air cooler. Because if you're wanting to air cool in this case, you've got quite a few options because for air cooler height, you've got support of up to 190 millimeters for a tower cooler. Very, very uh, versatile for air cooling. However, we're gonna be using an AIO for this build because that's just how we roll. There's a couple other considerations with this case as well to make your life easier or worse, depending on which way you look at it. This whole PSU cover area basically can be removed with four screws. There's two screws on the front, two screws on the rear. You can remove that whole bit so you can do all your cable management and then just shove this in on the end when you're done. I won't be removing that for this build. I don't think it's very necessary for me to do that, but that is quite a nice little consideration if you're not as comfortable with cable management. The other consideration you need to take into account is for the GPU mounting, you see there's only two slot covers here. If you're using a GPU like the RTX 3090 Founders Edition, where it has three slots, you're not gonna be in luck. You're not gonna be able to use that GPU with this if you wanna be mounting it correctly. But most GPUs, even though they're multiple slots, like above two slot, like between two to four slot, you should be able to get away with it. But I would say three and a half slot is probably the absolute max that you wanna go in a case like this. You don't wanna go anything bigger. It's gonna be up against the glass with most 2.8 slot cards, which is pretty standard for most cards now. So just curb your expectations for GPU temperatures. Obviously we're gonna find that out in this video, but yes, just take that into account. The motherboard IO cutout is actually at the top of this case. So all the cables need to pass out through the top and out the back. And as I showed previously, there are big cutouts for all your cables. So you shouldn't have a problem plugging stuff in. Just to go over that again, all of the cables feed in through the back hole and they plug into the IO on the top. So the motherboard faces up. That's most of everything you need to know for now. Let's build in it, see if it's any good.
ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed this build in the Thermal Take Tower 100, but let's get this out of the way. Let's check out the thermals. As you're seeing here on this graph, the thermals for the CPU are not amazing. Actually, surprisingly, the GPU thermals are way better than I thought. So that is actually a bit of a bonus for this case. Now I'd like to do an air cool build with this to see how much better it's gonna be. I can guarantee you that the thermals for an air cooled CPU will be way better than this 120 mil AIO. I think that's a, not a bad result actually for the GPU. I thought that would be the most constrained thing, but actually a lot better than I expected it to be. All right, the parts, let's talk about them. The motherboard is the Biostar Racing Z490 T Silver. It's an ITX board that I had. It's one of the only ones that I actually have at the moment for a build. So that's why I went completely Intel with this build. Speaking of the CPU is the Intel Core i5-10600K. Again, it's the only chip that I had that suited this that I had available at the time of making this video. To cool the 10600K, we use the brand new Thermaltake TH120 ARGB Sync 120mm AIO liquid cooler. I noticed that this liquid cooler is actually exactly the same as the Silverstone one. So yeah, I, I'm guessing they're using the same OEM for this cooler. I removed both of the fans that came in this case and I replaced them with the Thermaltake Pure Duo 12. They're the white ones, they're fully addressable RGB as well. I obviously set the lighting to white and I used the controller that comes with these fans to do the lighting for this. So I didn't have to use the motherboard at all or anything like that. For the GPU, we went with the ASUS ROG Strix RTX 3080 White OC Edition. Uh, the reason why I use it is obviously because it's white and it's the only white GPU that I actually have right now. Okay, fans and everything aside, how is the Tower 100 to build in? Surprisingly, and I, I, I can't believe I'm gonna say this, this case was really nice to build in. Although the thermals aren't amazing, the cable management is a lot better than I thought it was gonna be, and it's a lot easier to hide stuff in this case. And to be honest, I was pretty lazy with the cable management, and it still looks really, really clean. So I think Thermaltake did a pretty good job for the cable management. I personally, and I've got to be honest, I wouldn't use a case like this, but I did want to see it and see what they did for the retail version of this case. And I think they did a pretty admirable job. The small form factor people out there and the people who are into hardcore ITX cases like the Meshlicious and all those cases, you're not gonna like this case. You're gonna say stuff like, oh, it's too big for an ITX case and you know, you should use this case and whatnot. I agree, right? I'm, I'm agreeing with you. It is a very, very big ITX case. But for what it is as a showpiece type of case, I think it's actually not too bad. The build quality of this case compared to most other thermal take cases that we've built with in the last year or last 18 months is way better. This case is built really, really good. Like they properly put thought into this. I mean, they had to, they got roasted based on the original design for this, but I think they did a pretty good job. Now, what could have made this better is complete mesh side panels. I think having the TG on the front would have been the best way to display the internals of the system if you wanted to go for a build like that. Me personally, not really my cup of tea, but if it had side mesh panels, I reckon we would have got a lot better thermals on this, especially the GPU would have actually been closer to it having no panels on if they did it this way. Just give us small things like maybe the other side of the case that's TG and that mesh panel, putting a radiator mount on that side, right? Or just something where you can have more cooling potential. I think that a Tower 150, like the next generation, could be a lot cooler. But this is kind of a step in the right direction if you ask me. They're, they're, they're kind of getting it, right? They're getting close to the mark with it. It's not terrible. That's, that's, that's my conclusion. What do you reckon, Claire? Not terrible. Not terrible. It's not terrible. So if you're looking to build something with an i5 or a Ryzen 5 or something like that with a 120mm AIO, I reckon this is actually not a bad deal. If you're going to use a tower cooler or an air cooler, I think this thing's gonna perform even better. We might come back and revisit this later. I'm not sure. I haven't thought that far into the future yet. At the end of it, I didn't think I was gonna like this case based on what I've seen other builds wise and what I've seen 
like with the layout and whatnot, but it actually turned out to be a fairly okay case. I don't hate it, and I thought I would, which is a nice change considering a few of the last thermal take cases I felt were a little bit lazy, but this one, and correct me if I'm wrong or don't agree with me, this is a lot more thought out. And I think that is basically everything I've got to say about the Tower 100. If you like the music you heard here, I make all the music. It's available over on Patreon. If you want to get early access to videos like this one, it's available over on Floatplane. Once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. You peak. We seek. We're going to do something a little bit different with this video. Are you guys ready? I'm going to do a little peel now. All right. Claire, I'm going to do the peel at the end. Look at that. Friends over at Peel Corp. What up? What up? All right. Why did this tempered glass sticker have to be on the other side? That's good. I don't like that. Oh, that one sounds good. All right, ladies and gents. That was a good shot. Here's what we're doing differently today. It's time to engage cinematic mode at the end of the video. Buckle up and enjoy. Thanks for watching.